how to properly play Conquest, or maybe the most efficient way to farm metals. We're gonna cover that today. And I think by the end, you'll see this is probably the best way to play Conquest anytime you're trying to get as much metals to buy all that stuff in the shop. So we'll show you how to optimize those Conquest metals. And we're gonna stand on the shoulders of a great creator, Corallus from Marvel Snap Zone. Corallus is a fantastic snap analytic. And if you're not already following me either on Twitter or checking out Marvel Snap Zone, you should definitely do it. He did a fantastic article, which is linked below. I highly recommend you go check it out to get even more details. So as mentioned, shout out to Corallus. This is the article if you wanna go check it out. This is a more advanced article. He's got one in here that you wanna check out the more simple conquest mode information. So like we talked about, we wanna talk about metals and efficiency. The first part, understanding how you got metals. There is a great chart that he put together here. You can see that there's some on entry aspects where you can get some metals. Those are all in this column. And then depending on the number of wins that you get within each different tier, you can see that you can get different different numbers of additional metals as you get further and further along. He's obviously thrown in the tickets there as well, but this is how you get medals by winning, by playing different tiers. Then he goes through different scenarios for games that last 15 minutes long and you have a 60% win rate and analyzes what is the best way to earn medals through this. He's got two charts here, both 15 minute games and a 60% win rate. The top one is analyzing each tier separately and the bottom one is analyzing each tier cumulatively. The concept there is just looking at these individually. Like if you just look at proving grounds within a silo, silver within a silo or all of them collectively slash cumulatively and i'll say that cumulatively is probably the best way to do this because that's actually how the game mode works unless you're going to spend mad gold to just jump into gold tiers and sit there and just farm that non-stop which i don't personally recommend unless you're a massive kraken and really want to do that so here's the cumulative chart we've got it metals per hour average number of metals earned well i guess it looks like that's it i mean it's infinity right video over the answer is no the next thing we look at is removing the 60 percent win rate keep the games at 15 minutes but the win rate of 60 percent is removed again we've got the tiers looked at separately versus cumulatively we'll focus on the cumulatively there's also a dashed line around this you can see that there and that shows the win rates of most decks you can expect to be in the 45 to 65 percent win rate for most decks or at least that's where you should be anything higher than that is great lower stop it just don't play it unless you're getting mad cube returns the biggest pull away from these charts is that the metals per hour increase proportionally which mean the tiers are actually very well balanced. A 50% win rate in infinite equals 100% win rate in proving grounds. You can see here 140 and around the same thing here. The next charts he has here is focused on the percent gains per tier. For this particular video, I'm not gonna focus on this. If you wanna go ahead and check this out in the article, again, link below. So again, conclusion, but there might be a better one coming. If your games take on average the same length of time, regardless of what tier you're in, it's better to be in the higher tiers. That's the best way to farm metals. So video again, done. Just be better and win more later. Do it. But you know what? I want to farm metals like crazy and I don't want to have to worry about winning in these higher tiers, but I want to do it in a way that doesn't screw over other players and isn't unethical as far as gaming or breaks any terms of service or would require the game developers to change something in game at a future time because it would be a considered a manipulation of something happening in game. We want to avoid those sort of things. Don't screw players, don't screw devs, don't do something that will result in a game change later or against terms of service. Personally, with what I'm about to discuss, I don't see anything wrong with what's happening there, but let me know your comments below. All right, so let's farm some metals. Remember, there's no penalty for snapping and proving grounds at all. You snap, you lose, whatever, you move on. There's no stress. I personally find this very refreshing. It's a nice sandbox that you can go test decks in, or if you're getting stressed on ladder, you're maybe tilting and feel like, you know what? I want to play, but I need to get out of this tilt. Go to Proving Grounds to play. Get your tilt out in Proving Grounds. Just play there, have some fun, relax. Also, you can use it to do missions. All of these things are great for Proving Grounds. Second dinner, do not change this. It's fantastic. So what you'll end up seeing a lot in Proving Grounds is people snapping right away, maybe both people, and then if they lose, they just immediately retreat. The only time I personally don't retreat or don't snap back is if I'm actually legitimately trying to test a deck out. And sorry, opponent, if you're trying to quickly farm through here or quickly get going, then I would just highly recommend anytime you're doing that and you're facing someone like me maybe testing or somebody else who might be testing or 
taking a long time, just concede and move on to the next match. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Proving Ground games are around five minutes long. We'll test this at the end of the video. So we got two charts again, tiers separately, tiers cumulatively. We're going to focus on the cumulative. This time, we're looking at Proving Ground's games being closer to five minutes long, and the rest of them are about 15 minutes, which is actually closer to the reality. When you look at this, holy cow, Proving Grounds, you've got a high amount of medals here. 252. And that was per hour. What was good before? Holy. All right. So before that 252, it was like, oh, that's a oh my okay so 166 at a 60 percent win rate in infinity that that's a lot longer games uh what are the flowers there this is like this new one here that's like a hundred more per hour okay all right so i'm liking this much better with this 252 and proving grounds what do we need for the 15 minute games okay i need like an 80 percent win rate here it, oh wow 80 to 85 percent win rate in infinity to equal that many medals per hour yeah good luck with that i mean even at a 40 this is the newer ones with shorter proving grounds 168 medals per hour at a 40 percent win rate in proving grounds with longer games that's like a 60 percent win rate in the infinity bracket like that's night and day people are already starting to do this i joked with bootman a little bit on twitter a few days ago like hey let's see if we can get people to do this snap 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 just go through proving grounds everybody help each other out and get a little bit more of those medals to go into the store so if you're trying to farm those medals snap 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 if you're sandboxing and testing don't snap no big deal if you are trying to farm and you face somebody in that testing sandbox zone who isn't snapping, just bail. It's not a big deal. Take the emotion out of it. Go have fun playing a different game and move on. The next person you might face actually might be a snapbacker and you both win. And then that tester will find somebody that they can actually play against that wants to test and feel good about it. It's like dating. If you figure out that somebody's really not in the same boat as you, you really want to stick there and see if it's going to work out or just, you know what, recognize it's not working and just move on to the next one. So again, the conclusion, if you want to farm medals, go to Proving Grounds, snap right away. If someone is taking a long time and or not snapping back after the first, second mat, just bail. Just bail, 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 and go find someone who will snap. Crawls has also mentioned some decks in here. I agree with his sentiment. Play the decks that you're most comfortable with so that way you don't have to think through it. And ultimately, that's what you want here. You're going for efficiency. You're going for speed. Play decks that you do not need to think. So don't play Bounce. Don't play Move. But play stuff like Evolve Lockjaw, Jane Jaw. Galactus, Destroy, Sarah Surfer. And he goes through and lists some decks in here if you're unfamiliar with what these are. Again, I play a, a similar Evolved Lockjaw deck, a little bit different. I'm going to do a highlight video on the one that I've been playing. Sarah Surfer, this is this deck. Again, not much thought to it. You get a bunch of threes out there. You limit some locations with Goose. You Surfer everything, and you get some good points. Discard is also a great non-thought here. You just sort of throw some discards out there. I don't love Swordmaster, so maybe replace that one one but again similar discard stuff is out there Corollas also has a graphic on here showing the shop and i want to touch on this a little bit as well i previously covered some of my opinions on this buy currency then tickets then cosmetics or just buy the whole darn store because you're getting a whole bunch of medals through farming and just have some darn fun just remember it's best to use all of your medals in the store before the season's over there was an answer by glenn talking about how medals are going to be exchanged for boosters at the end of the season and they were asking what the conversion rate was kent eric goes on to say that for every 100 medals going to turn into 15 boosters goes on to say that this is the best use of your boosters and a way for anybody who doesn't get to the shop in time to make sure that they don't waste those boosters so 100 medals 15 boosters is the best use so 250 medals 100 for 15 200 15 times 2 is 30 50 would be 7.5 so 30 plus 7.5 is 37.5 boot what's better my math wrong if it's not you might want to adjust your store a little bit there second dinner i will say it does work for this one he goes through and has a nice buying guide here i'm not going to go through this in detail if you want to check it out feel free his conclusion seems to be very similar to mine where it's all about buy what you can afford get the currencies get the cosmetics, get the ticket, well, get the tickets, get the cosmetics. And at the end, if you really want this avatar, it's a thousand medals. This is only going to be for people who really farm a ton, a ton of medals and just have a bunch left over and want to get it. I think they probably intentionally price this high, which I'm fine with. I think the people who spend in the time and or effort or the they have the ability to get this many medals should get something that not everybody else can get. And that's the way all things should be more time, more effort, more money spent, you get more. All right, so you guys ready to actually time this out? Let's see how this shakes out. I'm basically gonna click enter here, 
and I'm going to go start my timer right at the same time. You'll see edit where the timer jumps. That's only because I've clipped things here and there, but that's going to be running constantly the whole time. And my goal in this particular video is just to go as fast as I can. Need efficiency. All right, Axum, let's see. Are you going to snap on me? All right, I snap. Let's see what they do. All right, nice, nice. Good start. All right, we're both doing the same thing here. And the way my deck is currently set up, I like that I've got Thor. I like that I've got Jane Foster. Why aren't you not going? Come on, there you go. All right, Um, I like to see my lockjaw in here. Where's my lockjaw? Swap the position. All right, so right now I've got Thor on turn three, Dracula four, Jane on five, probably Doom on six. Let's see what else we get. Ooh, the Nexus. All right, so I'm going to put Thor over there. Oh, there's a Wasp. I'll have to put that over there. We're at almost the minute mark in turn three, so we'll see if we can... Come on, Axum, you're taking too long. Looks like a Darkhawk, uh, Devil uh, Devil Dino Darkhawk type deck. wonder if they've got a Storm hiding up over there. Um, I don't love getting High Evo there. It's, whenever you have a Dracula, that's the one bad thing about this deck is when High Evo comes into your deck, it's like, ugh. Because I'm not going to be able to play Doom and High Evo, and I'd rather get Doom out there to get five on the other on the other spots but we'll see so what do you, what is iron lad by the way second dinner can you please change iron lad so that i oh i forgot that they moved that's hilarious i'm an idiot <laughs> all right so we'll go here and that's what that's the bad thing about playing so quickly i was literally like locations whatever i'm just so we'll go ahead and do this there's sarah i'm surprised you played sarah in the nexus okay and right, we'll do that all right there's mjolnir i'm definitely losing this one that's fine but we're this is, runs about a timer right so let's get this out here let's get that out there let's go ahead and i mean the best thing i can do here is really just mm. all right well we're just gonna lean we're gonna lean in on hopefully the doom T it took a little bit longer than what i thought but that's all right we'll see what happens hopefully i can win these other two uh to get what i need but we'll see all right wasp dr doom all right so he's got a dark hawk he's got a mystique that's gonna be way more than what i can win with so he's gonna win this so i'll retreat so good job axum game was about uh what is that two minutes 30 seconds uh i will concede we got two minutes 30 seconds in there and i concede concede all right so game one less than three minutes let's try one more and not suck i've got to go through all these things get back to enter i'm still letting my timer go it's three minutes you know about three minutes for that to get back into a game all right we got venicor let's see if they're snapping i start with a lockjaw and a thor so i like everything's happening they're not snapping boo and this is might something you get up uh, all right so they're they're just they're they're just playing here now this is what you might get i'm gonna maybe see if we can get something or are we gonna get something or no because if not i'm gonna quickly i'm gonna retreat here shortly if they're taking too long all right so they are not snapping at all i'll uh i'm not gonna comment on this game we'll just see how long it takes at the end and we'll just jump right to it in a snap all right so that next round of the match took over four minutes which is just one round and i still have to keep fighting him so this is why you want to back out of these if somebody is actually looking to play against you so i ended up sticking that out and uh like corrales is saying 15 minutes not worth it trying another one we're just gonna zip to the end we're gonna time travel here you can see that the timer running so juan was we'll see how it goes hopefully he snaps right away you know snap come on juan snap for me snap for me snap for me and this is the problem so if they don't snap right away this is what i'm saying just fail oh they just snapped on turn two so maybe a chance i think it's probably because they think they're gonna win though we had a, cr a little clever player there who uh actually wanted to play but still again three minutes first round I luckily won, but we'll see if they concede. Of course they don't. Short one, but still six minutes. Last time, see if we can get a quick one on this. Or how long does it take to get a quick one? If we don't get a quick one right away, we'll see how long it takes to get a quick one. I'll just keep bailing. All right, got a snap, so that's good. But it looks like a bounce type deck. So I'm thinking they just snap because they're really excited. But definitely not a fast player. We're in round five now. They're definitely thinking each time. Boom. All right, we win. Let's see if they concede. Do they? Come on, concede, concede. Yeah. All right, so about four four minutes not they took a little bit longer there but not so bad so i think you get the idea if you want to farm just snap if they're not snapping bail until you get to someone you can if you want to stick it out that last one that i had there they played a little bit more than what i was hoping for but it was still only about four minutes that's not too bad and they conceded at the end but i also had that longer one where it drug out for what was it 15 16 17 minutes or whatever it was like that's a long long game let me know what your thoughts are on all of this below do you think that's okay to do this does this bother you do you think it's somehow like against the integrity of the game do you think it's something second dinner should change i I personally think everything is pretty good as far as this goes in game right now 
I'm enjoying Conquest. I wish there was a little bit more for casuals in it. I think that at some point, casuals might not be all that intrigued past, I don't know, maybe silver into gold a little bit. I don't know if they're going to go much further because it does take a while to play. But all in all, I personally really enjoy the game, what they've done with this mode, and the shop isn't too bad. I hope they expand on that. I think that they will. I think they started off soft just to see what people would do with stuff like this. So now they'll know, hey, look, people can just farm metals this way. So we got to be careful what we put in the shop because people just grab thousands of tokens or whatever they might they'll want the one to limit that right to an extent appreciate you making this far if you found it helpful at all please consider hammering down like button if you want to click that notification bell share with your aunts uncles nieces nephews appreciate it until next time hope you have a wonderful day